Victoria Decides. Live election night coverage from 6pm Eastern Daylight Time on the 6 News YouTube channel and our website, 6newsau.com. Thanks for having me on. Great to have you here. So look, the Liberals obviously didn't run in Richmond at the 2018 state election. Um, and as was, I guess, predicted and as we had seen, um, you know, kind of polls indicating would happen. and It did happen. It was an ALP versus Greens contest, two party preferred. Um, why make the move to run now, especially when um, the polls and the analysis seem to be pointing that way, that it's just going to be ALP v Green? Well, I guess we'll have to wait for election night to, to find out the results. But uh, having lived in the electorate myself for about 18 years, I've seen it change. I've seen it uh, gentrifies. I've seen the next generation come through. And yes, it has been eight years, but you know uh, we've got an average age of 31, 32 in the electorate. So half the people haven't had the opportunity to vote Liberal before. Um, so hopefully we see that reflected on election night. And we've also had a redistribution with North Fitzroy uh, no longer in the electorate. So things are, are, are totally different uh, demographic-wise, and Richmond has changed significantly in the last eight years. Now, uh, I think you went a bit viral um, for a, a campaign ad that uh, was out a few weeks ago. It was a really interesting one, and I, I've, I'll make sure people check it out. I'll have that linked. Um, but obviously, it took a different style to pretty much any other campaign ad from a new candidate we are seeing this uh, election. Why go with that? It's something that I don't think I've seen in any Australian election in recent memory, let alone this election. Well, Leo, I'm, I'm hopefully it's gone viral for the right reasons, uh, not for the wrong reasons uh, at times. Candidates make the odd mistakes. But ultimately, uh, I'm running in Richmond and we need to have a high impact to show everyone that um, you do have a representative. I'm putting myself forward. Um, I'm not from the political machine. I am a little bit different, i.e. I'm just like everyone else. I just went to a local uh, public school. Um, I played local footy, joined the military, I work and live locally. We just wanted to make that clear to everyone that I'm no different to them. And everyone has one and, and I'm one. Uh, I'm the daggy father. And, um, you know, that's that's what we've tried to put put across, that I'm just like everyone else. I'm not the political robot and I'll absolutely represent the people of Richmond. I, th I think it did go viral for the right reasons. I think at least some of the comments I saw when I posted it um, were, and from people who were vehemently anti-liberal, were, were pretty positive. Um, a reoccurring comment I seem to think was, um, you know, I, I like this guy, I like what he can bring, I like what I've seen in his ad. Why doesn't he run as an independent? What do you say to that? Uh, a, a lot of people have said that to me and uh, over the journey, although whether we like it or not, we've got a two-party preferred system. I've been a Liberal Party member for a long time. I believe in the Liberal values. And like any major organisation, we do have uh, problems um, and we can do better. So instead of sitting back and and um, not contributing to fixing the problem, I'm, I'm putting my hand up and running within the Liberal Party. And I think I can help our standing within Richmond and, and hopefully I can contribute to the overall party in um, the team in, in delivering for Victorians. You said you've got some problems there. Um, what do you think some of them are? Uh, I, sorry, I just um, to clarify that, I think at times we have some perception, um, you know, issues there. So, and specifically with the younger demographic, and um, we are no different. Um, and at times, you know, our opponents exploit that and point us out to, to be. Um, and I'll say it for, for your audience, Leo, you know, stale, pale, old, white males. Um, we're far from that. We're no different to them. Um, and we care about all the values you have. We care about the environment. We care about the health system. Uh, we care about the future generations coming through. We care about small business. Um, and some of the misconceptions out there is just trying to connect with the community and, and build that relationship um, and, and Get rid of those myths. 
Um, now, the other thing, of course, is you, you also mentioned um, liberal values there. Your party obviously actually recently had its 78th birthday, the Liberal Party of Australia, back when it was formed in uh, 44. Um, do you think, and you said you have been a member for you know a reasonable amount of time, um, your, your party does stick to those overall liberal values and has, because we, we always hear about infighting, and that's not just a liberal thing, it seems to be in Labor as well, we hear about infighting, but um, do you think your party has managed to stick to those overall liberal values that you just um, did talk about? about oh absolutely uh predominantly you know there are liberal values and all values evolve over time and you know become modernized and, and we're continually modernizing uh the infighting is a bit of a press speed up i mean in, in victoria I, I don't see any of it we've got a united team uh in victoria that, that's what i definitely see but the liberals continually evolve over time and um we need to continually evolve um, and that, that's part of staying relevant for the electorate. But that's not forgetting your core values. That's just evolving and modernising them and the way you deliver them. Now, we know there's going to be, and it's already been seen, you know, on social media and the like, but um, there, there is a lot of angle towards the Labor government for various things, um, the last two years of COVID um, just being some of that. Um, but in general, and this seemed to be reflected at the federal election results too, there is a lot of discontent with the major parties. And obviously that goes back to um, the Liberals. So for those who might not be happy with Labor, why should they vote Liberal in a seat where we could have a minor party being the Greens, you know, pretty easily win it? Again, that is what's predicted. I always don't trust the predictions, but, you know, that is what some are predicting. So why... For those who are mad at one major party, go to the other. Well, I guess what we've seen is we've actually had a minor party member in the seat of Richmond for 10, uh, 11 years, I think, Leo. And and um, people have woken up that minor parties find it very, very difficult to deliver anything. And as you've, you've probably seen with the Teals, um, you know, they've had their staff cut. It's hard to deliver being a minor party. And so... Victorians can see through that. And we've also had the dysfunction of the Greens in the Yarra Council over here in Richmond. So people can see that and they can see Labor is tied. They can see the health system is tied. They can see across the, the electorate of Richmond and see the planning issues. Um, and I guess COVID, people are worn out. They can see the local businesses and the shopping strips closed down. So we're putting forward a real alternative um to move and you know richard Wynne is retiring and he was respected in this electorate and we're putting forward i'm putting forward myself so people can change their vote for someone who will represent them i'm not from the union machine i'm not from a faction um and i definitely wasn't a dan andrews staffer so i won't be the yes person i'll really represent uh team richmond you know in the party room if i'm elected how do you think you're going to go? As I mentioned earlier, you know, it, it does seem to be a, a, a major ALPV green contest, but uh, upsets in politics are not something we are going to, uh, you know, think aren't possible this election. And, and we've seen it. We have, saw it happen in 2018. There were seats we no one would think would uh, change hands, that we did see change hands. So, how, honestly, how, how do you think you're going to go? I think we'll go quite well. I mean, we've got 40, 40 days to go. We're not taking anything for granted. We're putting forward a, a real option. We've been speaking to everyone out in the electorate. Uh, we're doing a lot of hard work. And the electorate's ready for a change. They're ready for a government change. And they want to be represented. And they, they feel like they haven't been represented. Uh, there's frustrations through local council. There's frustrations through the state government and across the federal government in this electorate. And... Uh, putting myself forward to represent the people of Richmond. And people realise that I'm not from the party machine. Um, I'm not from the union machine and I haven't done my time. I've put my hand up and I represent. I've got a history of representing, as you pointed out. I've been a president of an RSL and many other advocacy roles. Um, so as a, a politician once said at a press release, uh, press conference about four months ago, just Google me. People have Googled me and they can see that I represent. And if it's the right cause, I'll represent and I'll work quite hard to represent their views. And, and people can see that with me. Lucas Moon, we'll leave it there. Best of luck to you. I'm sure I'll see some of your election signs around Richmond, but uh, thanks very much for your time. No worries. Thanks for having me on. Thank you.